We Crashed is airing its penultimate episode this week and overall viewers have been left disappointed by the series. In this video, we're going to explore exactly why We Crashed hasn't worked and we're going to be going over some of the wild and crazy aspects of the story that they've left out of the show. The Newmans forced the show Generation Hustle on HBO to change the ending of their WeWork episode. So have they used their money and Hollywood connections to put pressure on We Crashed? And we'll also be looking at how much of a hand producers Jared Leto and Anne Hathaway have had in the story. Of course, there's two episodes left of We Crashed, but I really think the next episode is going to cover the failed IPO and the final episode, since we got that little flash forward, we'll probably delve into Adam stepping down as CEO and a little bit of what happened afterwards. So I don't think they've got enough time to possibly cover everything. So I'm going to talk about especially some of the crazy aspects of We Grow, the school, the vanity project, and also the failed public offering. And I determined at that valuation that the 200 buildings were each worth less than that WeWork office was being valued at. And I said that WeWork was the most overvalued private company in the world. Because that is truly one of the most bizarre things in the entire WeWork Newman story. The story with WeWork was one guy who's a remarkable salesman. The future is about light, innovation, creativity. It's going from me to we. He was so charismatic that all of these staffers, a huge amount of the tech press, a lot of the smarter industries in the world lost grip on reality. And suddenly, this thing they believed in wasn't real. I am going to start out by talking about one of the biggest, if not the biggest things missing from We Crashed, and that is how terribly women were treated at the company. I think they allude to this a little bit, and when they try and focus on it in the episode at summer camp, when Rebecca says, oh, a woman's job is to support men, and they really chickened out of of covering this subject because even just having it through Rebecca's eyes, like that, okay, that was a very idiotic thing to say and just ridiculous. And she should have got all the backlash that she did get. But there was so many other worse things going on at the company. When I first watched We Crash and I saw Adam Newman had a male assistant, I just thought, oh, they're they're not going to cover this at all because there was gross, gross sexism going on at WeWork. The board is all male. Most of the executives were all male. And Adam was warned about this countless, countless times. And he just normally said he doesn't care and he loves nepotism. He's been quoted as saying that many, many times because he also filled up the upper levels of the company with his and Rebecca's family members. Men at WeWork also made way, way higher salaries than women. And when Adam himself used to interview women for upper level positions, he asked them if they were going to get pregnant, which is illegal. And when women did go on maternity leave, he would say to them, oh, you're going on vacation. And if anything went wrong when the women were on maternity leave, he would have an absolute fit and call them screaming saying, oh, this deal fell apart because you went on vacation. Adam also pressured men whose partners were having babies to come back to work the next day. And he also at one stage did have a female chief of staff who was originally his assistant that had worked her way up. I I felt constantly like I couldn't just breathe. Adam would say, I could fire all of you and do this by myself. That's a bold statement to say to people who are working their ass off for you. 
And when she went on maternity leave, Adam hired a man to replace her and paid the man double the salary that he was paying the woman. And when she returned, he put her back to being an assistant, which is also illegal to have a woman return to a lesser role after coming back from maternity leave. So some of the worst stories to come out of WeWork were s harassment and there was many many cases of this happening not only at work but at company events that they forced people to go to there was one particular woman who she had been fired by the company and she actually sued them for wrongful termination and this when this happened a lot of people in the company pointed to this as the moment that they became very disillusioned with WeWork because the woman's lawsuit came in and Adam and Miguel drafted this email in response to the whole of the company and they basically sent out an email to everyone saying that this woman had got drunk at company parties and that she was a really poor employee and all these other horrible things and I mean can you imagine somebody saying at work that they've been s harassed and the company then sends an email out to all of its employees talking crap about the person and saying like they asked for it because they were drunk. Adam and Miguel then asked HR to dig up pictures of the woman at company events and to get ones where it was obvious she was drinking to try and leak those to the media. And a lot of employees said they had kind of expected this behavior from Adam, but the fact that Miguel was actually the one who wrote the email out and signed it with Adam, that that's when they just really thought, okay, I need to get out of here because this company's culture is really toxic. So the last episode of We Crashed, episode six, focused a lot on We Grow, which is the school and the Newman's vanity project. So I personally was disappointed with this episode because I really felt as though all they did was tell us about the school, they didn't show us anything and it just was a lot of boring conversations that if you didn't have the outside context it was hard to really know exactly what was happening and one of the number one rules from movies and television is show don't tell and this show is just literally telling you then they're not showing you anything show us that Rebecca Newman had no business opening a school because there's plenty of things that happen that you could show in an easy way in the episode for people to realize how badly this is going a lot of people in a couple of the books that I've mentioned the cult of we and billion dollar loser they talk a lot about the school so what is the mission of We Grow, just so I understand clearly? The mission of We Grow, and quite honestly, the collective we that we're all living under, is to elevate the world's consciousness. Mm. That We Grow specifically through unleashing every human superpowers and expanding happiness. And on the first day, Rebecca Newman actually had a full-blown screaming tantrum at all the teachers because... When she got there, she had a couple of other parents with her and the school, when you would go in, you would have to use an elevator that had like a key card and she and the other parents didn't have one because they hadn't sent the key cards out to the parents and she just didn't have one with her. So they had to wait in the lobby for other teachers to come and whenever they brought the kids up to the school, she called all the teachers into her office and literally was screaming and crying at them about how could they let this happen and it was such a disaster and this was such a regular occurrence that whenever Rebecca was away from the school on vacation that the teachers referred to this time as the festival because it meant she was away and things could be normal because the other thing with the Newmans is they treated this school like it was their own private party place and they would host parties at the weekend at the school absolutely trash it and just 
leave it that way so when the teachers would come in on monday morning the place would be an absolute mess and they'd have to like really quickly clean it up before the kids came and what also happened was because the newman's kids were allowed to like run wild over the weekend in the place and like climb up on things that the teachers said for the next few days after the weekend they would have to like reprimand the children and say you know you you can't do that you can't just climb on things and the kids would say oh well i was allowed to do it this weekend when my eldest daughter was in kindergarten as we started to look around for schools in both new york and the west coast i wasn't finding a place that was going to nurture her her spirit and her soul so that just this the they very much like ruled whatever could go on at the school and there's there's other just stories of this whole thing just being all about them which I mean, if you watch two seconds of the show, you you know that that's the case because they used to still take the kids out of school and go, you know, to California or Hawaii or whatever for months on end. And one time when they took the kids out, the ki- the oldest kid used to be the lead singer in one of the band. And these are still like little, little kids. And when she was away one of the teachers used this as an opportunity to give one of the kids who was struggling a new kid a little bit of attention and they had previously had this rule where they said okay if a kid's in the band they have to play an instrument and this little girl that the teacher wanted to help she didn't play an instrument but the teacher was like oh we can make an exception and let the kid into the band to to sing And then, of course, when Rebecca Newman came back, she said, absolutely not. And she took the kid out of the band and the kid, you know, just couldn't be in the band, which is awful. Like, poor kid. But it's just whatever they wanted to to go on there. One of the most out of touch things, I mean, there's, there's many, many out of touch things, but one of the biggest ones I remember from the books is that whenever it came to the time where the teachers were asking for raises or cost of living raises, you know, modicum raises, not not anything insane. And a lot of the teachers said that Rebecca just had no clue whatsoever how much it costs to live or live in New York as well, like so expensive because she's just always been insanely rich you know, at I mean, some point rebecca was talking to the company about we grow she's talking in front of a cross section of 700 employees and is basically saying that new york city private schools aren't good enough for our children you're going to start a school that has like a 35 40 grand tuition fee per elementary school kid that school is exclusionary to a lot of people right they show in the beginning of the show that she gets a million from her dad and her wedding day and maybe she got a million on her wedding day, but there was multiple other millions prior to that from her dad's cancer charity scams. That's just a prototypical person who's grown up in certain circles and doesn't realize there's other people in the world. But when this raise was going on at the school, she was denying the raises to the teachers and said, you should be honored to work here. I don't want this to be about money you should want to to come here because it's an honor and it you shouldn't really be concerned with money basically and kept saying to them well why are you so obsessed with this this raise and it's just so ludicrous but if there's someone that you can think of saying something like this to actual working people you can imagine it to be some absolutely never worked a day in their life, out of touch billionaire. Tell you how to live, we live, and now we're gonna redefine how you live. And that wasn't good enough, we grow, we're gonna educate your kids better. The out of touchness and just the absolute arrogance of these people just really astounds me because I think it's unreal that they thought that they could redefine work never having actually worked in their life because Although they do show, you know, Rebecca got money from her parents and has never worked, they do portray Adam as a bit more, you know, working his way up in the show. But both his parents are doctors and 
his entire schooling was paid for his grandmother gave him six figures to start his companies like he had a lot of privilege as well the idea that you're going to reinvent work is incredibly audacious to itself to say while we're doing that we're also going to reinvent education which people have been trying to do for centuries that's the kind of decision tree that you see in a company where you start to believe your own bs and neither of them have ever ever worked a real job so after redefining work having never worked the natural next step is redefining education having no education or experience in education and we grow it's starting as a school yes but it's going to be evolving into much more i'm assuming right? it's kind of a practice and a new approach to life we have started with children but we're as soon as next week starting to pilot some of the curriculum on our we grown ups so let's get into the real batshit crazy ipo stuff i think this is where friday's episode is going to go in the last episode they got across quite well that the fact that adam was asking for more and more was the reason that the deal with masa fell apart but i don't think they made it clear that this would have benefited literally everyone softbank was going to buy everyone out so the employees at wework would have got something and adam still would have been a billionaire But the reason this all fell apart is because he wanted more, as always. And so the deal kept being pushed back, pushed back. And eventually the markets changed because investors didn't like that SoftBank was going to buy WeWork. Investors didn't like WeWork. So once the market changed, SoftBank then didn't have the money to buy WeWork. So if Adam just would have accepted being a billionaire then this all would have gone very, very differently. So the deal fell through and they needed more money because of Adam's spending. For every $1 WeWork was making, they were spending two and they were burning $100 million a week. Adam Newman told us repeatedly that WeWork was profitable. We've since found out that how Newman and WeWork were considering themselves profitable was a stretch at best. So Adam Rebecca put together the S1, which is supposed to be the financial document that's the precursor to going public. So in this document, you're supposed to explain everything about your company. You have to come clean about it all, about all the finances. It has to be just encompassing of everything to do with your company and it's basically the pitch document for people to buy shares in your company but it is supposed to only be a financial document but of course adam and rebecca wanted to redefine this too so and they were spending a lot of time in the hamptons and they had we work employees who would get a seaplane or helicopter to go out to the hamptons just to meet with them on some ipo stuff keep reading it and be like god did anyone look at this and tell them what it was going to look like the reality is that like people had been telling adam that for a while but he didn't care he wanted to enrich himself and thought that it wouldn't be a big deal the whole document i will link it in the description box because if you look at a normal s1 and this it it looks like an s1 being put through like yoga babble bullshit filter just think about a reality in which the energy that we're feeling right now with one another is an energy of unity an energy where i am you and you are me and we all are we because it's just full of absolute rubbish like the whole elevate the world's consciousness drop into the world of we with many of these unicorn ipos the ceo has mentioned anywhere between 12 and 40 times in the case of adam newman it was 170 times and as scott galloway (laughs) says they're renting fucking desks (laughs) like it's insane and when this S1 was coming out, Adam and Rebecca thought they were going to garner all this praise and people were going to think it was wonderful. And employees at WeWork had been warning them, this is not going to look good because of what is in this document. But because the board had been letting Adam do whatever he wanted and all these yes men were around them all the time, 
they were just thought they were going to get all this praise and it was going to be great. If you tell a 30-something male that he's Jesus Christ, he's inclined to believe you. Rebecca is very involved in the part of the document that people laughed at. But in reality, they were absolutely torn to shreds. Different item that horrified them. <laughs> so like one by one, they would say, I cannot believe his wife is choosing his successor. Or so egregious that he would have his 20 to 1 voting shares or... I can't believe the company is paying him $6 million for the trademark to the word we. I have never seen a reaction like this. And I mean, Twitter is usually vicious, but the day that this S1 came out, people just kept finding new things, new things. And one of these things in a normal S1 would have been a red flag, but it was just an absolute sea of red flags. He was buying buildings and then asking WeWork to lease those buildings from him. And then he took $700 million out of this company at the very time he was asking the public to put money in. People tore it apart and Masa literally called Adam to Tokyo and told him, you cannot go public this needs to be stopped and once the ipo was stopped it was too late people were already like this guy should not be ceo just even the decision to publish the s1 was enough to say this guy shouldn't be ceo so by that stage it was it was done like people started calling for his ousting right there and within a few weeks he was out of WeWork and I'm sure that's what we'll be seeing over the next two episodes. Personally, I think that Jared Leto heard the story about this guy who got a billion dollar payout and was hell bent on playing him. I'm not a big fan of the prosthetics and even small things like Adam is really, really, really tall and I just think that there would have been a better choice if Jared Leto wanted to still be the producer or whatever, that fine. But I just don't think that, that this part was right for him. But I think that he just wanted to be involved with the story and be centered around his performance. It's like with the Joker. It's, it's not about the actual story, the movie, the show. It's about his performance getting attention and he just wants to do these wild performances like with that us constantly like with us constantly seeing them drinking and dancing and singing in we crash like how many times have we seen that I, it's just showing us the same scene over and over again like we get it there's so much more that we could be being shown instead of just Jared Leto and you know doing this crazy like drinking and and dancing like I, I'm so over it that I feel like that's like all we see every episode. Two of the biggest company downfalls Theranos and WeWork happen to both be appearing in miniseries on our screens right now. As someone who's followed the Theranos saga since 2007 and followed WeWork's story with great skepticism since early 2010s I thought my Christmases had come at once when I learned the dropout and we crashed would come out at the same time. For the majority of episodes, I enjoyed the dropout. I was disappointed by the ending and wish they would have done more so that the episodes could go into more detail on Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani, their lies and fraud. It was a light version of the story and the ending was rushed but I did overall think the series presented general audiences with an accurate-ish timeline of what went on at Theranos and when it comes to Holmes and Balwani, but still touched on them as people and how their influence and relationship affected the company. When it comes to We Crashed, I have been exceptionally disappointed not only are the episodes a slog to get through, but it seems as though the We Crash team and producers like Jared Leto are more interested in how cool they can make Adam Newman and Leto is more interested in creating scenes that look good or show off his performance. We get it, they play a lot of music and dance at the office. Stop showing us different versions of the same scene and show us what really happened 
on how actual people, the employees, were screwed. We haven't even got to know any employees outside of the rich executives and board members and that right there is the problem. They are telling the story of the wrong people. We don't care about rich investors losing money. We care about the employees who work day and night and got screwed. The people who lost their jobs and the people who were harassed. We Crashed doesn't work because we don't have anyone to root for. We don't even know anyone outside of the million and billionaires. The dropout showed us Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani, sure, for who they were, the villains of the story. But we also had heroes, Erica, Tyler, John Carreyrou. But in We Crashed, we have a pair of narcissists who are the most unrelatable people on earth. But We Crashed is far too busy focusing on how cool Jared Leto thinks he is playing Adam Newman that we haven't been able to get to know a single character whose net worth is under 10 million. Of course, maybe they could turn it around in the last few episodes, but I guess we'll see. If you made it to the end of this video, you are the absolute best and thank you so much for watching. I will link my big mega video on WeWork and my 15 minute quick WeWork video in the comments down below and the cards and I'll also link all of my social media, merch store, my main YouTube channel, my Patreon, and everything else you could possibly need, including my dropout videos. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.